Welcome to a special edition of Rune News. I'm your host, DXDLB. Finally, we've got a full set right now. It's been too long. Janik, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be back. And also, we've got Gmaster323. Yahoo! <laughs> All right. We're going to talk about... Uh, we're going to talk the top five that are currently in Rune Labs right now. So, without uh, further ado, let's go check this thing out. Let's find out what the five most popular ideas in Rune Labs are. Number five is from Exludian. Editing Grand Exchange offers without a boarding. The ability to change the price offer of an item without cancelling it. And the ability to change the quantity of an item in the Grand Exchange without cancelling this offer. Janik, what do you reckon of this one? Well, I find this to be very intriguing. I would love the idea of being able to um, alter my price without having to uh, totally start all over again. Okay, and J-Master? Well, I actually think it's a great idea because it is kind of annoying when you have to abort it, then go looking for it again. But it's a, the way they should do it, it's actually the way they suggested it in the, in the paragraph. You mean that the way the ability to change the price offer without counseling it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I suppose that's a good idea. Um, the one concern that I do have by this particular suggestion from Ex Ludian is some, if you want to put an item on the Grand Exchange, you know what you're selling, and the chances are by the time you've actually clicked on confirm, it's already sold. Well, that's just selling DX. Um, it's about buying objects is the main priority. And also changing the price offer uh, as the uh, price changes on the Grand Exchange. I think it changes every hour or something. The price of it would change, say, every hour or so. And we don't have that ability for the Grand Exchange to change the offer to what it is at the present time. I think that's what I think that's what he's going for here. The ability for the Grand Exchange to adjust the prices uh, as they fluctuate. Yeah, it oh boy. You know, the way the uh, prices can so be changing at, at any time, it would be kind of tricky to to use this, but usually whenever I uh do any uh, selling on the GE, I don't always seek full price. Usually, I would, um, I'm willing to take a discount of, say, like, of about, say, like, 50 to 40 percent. But even, you know, when I do um, lowball my items, usually it still takes a while before someone actually makes the buy. And J Master, what do you think? Uh, the ability for, say, the Grand Exchange to auto adjust the price of the item as it fluctuates. Well, if they're going to keep adjusting it and they're putting the uh, ability to adjust it, why can't they adjust it to the amount that they're actually lowering it or making it higher? I think, I, I like I said, I think what, they, what, what this guy's aiming for, he probably didn't make a good job of, uh, you know, describing the idea that he has is if an item is on sale for a while, the price of, say, if he's going to put it on the normal price, that normal price would adjust as the Grand Exchange prices fluctuate. Our number four most popular item on Rue Labs is by Dragons 4 k I I think that's how he's pronounced it. He may have pronounced it differently. If so, I apologize. Adamant and Runite Dragons. Okay, so the Metallic Dragons, Bronze through Mithril are cool. But what players have been wondering for a while is if we will get new Metallic Dragons, Adamant and Runite Dragons. Not only it'll, would it be fun to face ridiculously strong dragons and actually defeat it, rather than sending it to the slumber... But it, it's also a piece of RuneScape history. The other metal dragons, bar Mithril, have been around since 05. So this year, on the 10th year anniversary of these metal behemoths, it's time to finish the series off by adding 
Adamant and Runite Dragons. J Master, what do you think? I think it's a good idea because it is a bigger challenge. But the question becomes, where are they going to put them and what items are going to drop? Well, I'd imagine, I'd imagine no brainer, adamant bars and runite bars, pretty much the same way as they've got iron uh, dragons and steel dragons and also mithril dragons. They drop, you know, whatever metal uh, that's adapted to their name. Yes, but I'm also talking about what items that drop with it, besides the bones and the adamant or any of the bars. Are they going to drop something rare with it, or they're going to drop uh, have everything just go the way that everything else is? Well, they would have to come up with some sort of drop table for them, specifically. Um, specifically, uh, something more worthy of um, the particular dragons that you're going to go for in here, in this case being Adamant and Runite dragons. I'm assuming the drop, the majority of the drop for would be whatever is relevant to that particular metal. In this case, if it's Adamant, then I wouldn't be surprised if it drops all all sorts of random Adamant gear from, say, the bars, all the way up to maybe a Adamant two-hander or something along those lines. Okay, and the other thing is, that here's another question for you, or for the people out there. What kind of ability or attack power that they're going to use? Because each one's different. Indeed. Yeah, Janik, what do you think of the Adamant and Runite Dragons? Well, I would think that a challenge of this caliber, definitely, you're going to want to see higher-end drops. Now, especially, say, for, like, the Runite Dragons, it would uh, be a good idea to have um, all the pieces of, say, like, uh, Dragon Armor, and maybe even possibly uh, pieces of, uh, of the god armor as well. You think gods made the adamant and runite dragons? Only the heavens know. <laughs> How about say like if they were spawned from say like the sick and twisted mind of say like uh, Bandos? Again, from the enemy side. And besides that, Bandos wouldn't be able to make the dragons because Bandos is already dead. Which they say. Uh, or is he dead? Oh, God, here we go. 